Right now, the world's economy looks a bit like this. We call it a linear economy. It means that we grow, collect and mine raw materials and then use the raw materials to make the goods that we need. And then when the goods stop working, we replace, upgrade or simply throw them out. Eventually, everything ends up as waste. In this linear economy, we use too much and we throw away far too often and it's our planet that pays the price. Clearly, something has to change. So what if we could transform this into this? It's called a circular economy, and there's good evidence that it could help us solve a lot of our problems. In a circular economy, we use our waste as the raw material to make new products. In fact, it works a lot like nature. Plants consume carbon dioxide and sunlight and then produce oxygen and animals breathe the oxygen and eat plants and then the waste that they produce helps to give birth to the next generation of plants. In nature's cycle, the waste, fallen trees, leaves and dead animals break down and become the ingredients for the next round of growth. So why are we talking about this idea of a circular economy right now? Our natural resources are limited. We're cutting down forests and digging up minerals at an unsustainable rate and sooner or later they're bound to run out. At the same time, demand for them is only growing. By 2030, and that's not that far away, we'll have three billion new middle class consumers on the planet. Each one of them buying like the rest of us, using up more and more of our resources. This is where a circular economy can be so beneficial. Because while nature wastes nothing, the waste that we humans produce is a massive problem. Our oceans are already full of throwaway plastic and we've built mountains out of electronic waste, which is full of toxic chemicals. And things that we do every day, like driving and flying, produce CO2 and other greenhouse gases that fuel climate change. Less waste, less pollution, it's better for everyone. And the advantages of a circular economy have a kind of positive snowballing effect. If we take less from nature, we protect the plants, the animals and the ecosystems that help provide us with clean air and drinking water and keep the planet at a safe and livable temperature. If we can just do more with what we already have, we can reduce the competition for the mineral resources. It could even lead to a reduction in global conflict. So if a circular economy was in place, how would your day-to-day -day change? Let's say you need a new fridge. Instead of buying a new one, you might rent one at a fixed price each year. And then if the fridge breaks down, the company comes and they take away your old fridge and leave a new one. Then they take the fridge apart, use what they can to build new fridges instead of taking it to the dump. This model encourages companies to manufacture products that last, and less manufacturing means we save energy. But getting to a circular economy won't just happen on its own. We need interventions to drive the shift taxes, incentives, regulations and social pressure. This could lead to higher demand and then lower prices for goods made from recycled materials. Take toilet paper as an example. It makes more sense to use recycled wood to make toilet paper than it does to keep cutting down forests. But we'll only see people start buying toilet paper made from recycled wood when it becomes less expensive or fashionable or when cutting down virgin forests to make toilet paper becomes illegal or heavily taxed. The desire to make our economy more circular is already driving loads of inventive thinking. A British startup called Jiva found a way to make computer circuit boards out of flax instead of plastic. When a circuit board reaches the end of its life, it's thrown into water, the metal parts are removed and reused, and the flax can be composted. No waste. Another company, So Blue, uses seaweed to make those see-through containers that you see at the supermarket for holding fish or fruit. So when you finish with the container, you throw it in the compost instead of adding it to the mountains of plastic waste that we've already produced. But the circular economy is not just about finding new ways to remanufacture and recycle goods and make them last longer. It's about doing away with this buy, use, throw away mentality that we've become so attached to. So is it possible? Like reducing carbon emissions to zero? It's probably beyond us. But we need to try and get as close as we can and we need to start now. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned something from today's video. Hit like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more discussions like this one. And if you thought this was an interesting topic, you'll love our video on net zero emissions, which you can watch by clicking here. And don't forget to leave us a comment. We love hearing from you.